So with Studio One version six, we have the lyric track. So what is the lyric track? Well, first of all, when I first heard about this, I wasn't immediately excited about it. And then when I started to use it, I kind of didn't get it at first. But once I did understand it, I thought, okay, this is pretty cool and I actually might end up using this. So what I thought we would do in this video is take a look at the two different scenarios in which this works. So first things first, the lyric track is made available by clicking on your global tracks and you can activate this by clicking lyrics. Now, we have a couple different options in terms of how this works. This can work with instrument tracks, basically using note data to derive our lyrics from. And it can also work in a global mode where we can import text files. We're going to look at both. So first off, let's start with this MIDI file over here. I'm going to rename this main melody and let's just call this piano. So basically the way that this works is that any instrument track that you have available, that will be um, available as an option to show or display the lyrics. Now I'm going to select this track and notice that this has automatically started to display some lyrics. I'm going to double click to open this file or rather this, this instrument part. And notice that we have this new lane within our editor. We have our velocity, no controller, sound variations, everything that we're used to, but we have lyrics. And the way that this works is that any note data that we create, it automatically creates um, a event of equal length where we have the ability to enter some lyric data. So I could say like blah, and that, that blah is now associated to this note. So if I now click my cursor over here, you'll see that it says blah. If I delete this, it's no longer there and I can get rid of that here as well. So that is the basic way it works. So whether you want to play this in a simple form, the melody on a piano, for example, or any instrument that you want, keep in mind, it's gonna read any instrument track that you have available. Or if you wanted to, for example, run an instance of Melodyne on a lead vocal and basically hard tune it to 100% and then drag that event down to an instrument track and see how it did in terms of deriving the basic melody from a, from a lead vocal file, then that's something that you could try as well. So I've just kind of hacked away at this. Now the way that this works is that once you have entered this information, it's then displayed. Now, in terms of entering information, there's a couple different things I wanna talk about. Let's go to an area that hasn't been done yet. If we double click, we have the ability to enter something and then clicking tab will automatically move me to the next um, event. So I can click like this. Also, clicking shift tab will move me back So I've, if I've made a mistake. Now, in terms of, let's delete this and let's delete this and let's go back here. In terms of if you have one word, that's spread across two syllables, and that's becomes gets spread across two different words, like for example here. Lady. What I've kind of noticed on my own is that, let's say that um, this over here was that same word, lady. What I've done is I've just clicked LA and I've clicked dash and it automatically brings me to the next event, which is the second syllable of the word. So I click DY. And that has been working for me pretty good. Now, what it ends up happening is after you have this um, lyrics that have been assigned to the note data of this instrument part, then you can click this option over here to click the lyrics display. And we're gonna get into the wrench options and the edit options a little bit later. But now what ends up happening is we have this. And I'm gonna close this for now. 16 years later in this young lady speaking to a crowd. Okay, later it doesn't, it looks like I forgot to add a dash there. Uh, right over here, yeah, I did. So I'm going to, where is it? We'll go shift tab and I'm gonna write L-A-T dash and that should fix this up. Let's see that one more time. Years later in this young lady. Yeah, so when you add the dash, it keeps the word together and it highlights the two different parts of the word as per the syllables, okay. so. That's the way that we do this in, in this context. Now, if you like working in the score editor, then notice that these lyrics are also available here as well. 16 years later in this young and of course, this could be something that you put on an external monitor and give to an artist, or it could be something that you basically create a digital copy of this lead sheet for them, and it's something that they can you know, put in a document or even print out or whatever the case is, essentially whatever you need it to be. And while we're on the score page, keep in mind that we also have this new lyric uh, tool over here where we can basically make adjustments to these different areas and I can directly add lyrics in for these events that don't have anything. Or if you had anything that was spelt incorrectly, then you could fix that. So let's go back to here just for a quick moment 
and make sure that I covered everything that needs to be covered here. Yep, so it looks like we're good there. So I think this is cool, and for some people, uh, they might definitely want to use this with their instrument tracks, and it, especially if they're using a the score editor. But for me, the real kind of power in this lies with the global part and importing text files. Now, when I work with lead vocals, let me get rid of this for now. When I work with lead vocals, typically, I don't record my lead vocal necessarily on one full track. I might have my lead verses on one track and my lead choruses and my lead bridge on another because I'm treating them differently. But what we do see is we see a waveform overview display that has all of our lead vocals across it. And we have an indication in terms of timing. Now, the way that the lyric track works with respect to the global track and importing text files is... I have a text file over here where I've just basically typed out the lyrics here. And the way that this wants to work is it's going to see one line of text and those can all be snapped and aligned to individual bars. So I've typed this in one line at a time, just exactly as I've heard it. I want to make mention of one fact though before we go on. Um, I'm going to open up a new text document and let's go edit, paste and match style. So the way I'm on a Mac OS and the way that it works with text edit, for example, is that it creates this type of file. Now, the way that, that I needed to format my text file in order for it to be seen in my browser is I needed to go to format and I needed to make plain text. Now, the minute I did that, if I close this, we'll be able to see it gave me this extension, which is .txt and it's using Unicode UTF-8. I'm not sure what the PC equivalent of that is, but I think as long as you have something that's a .txt extension, then you're good. And the way that I can do that in an easy way in Mac OS S, in Mac OS is simply by clicking that make plain text. Now, once that's been saved, you see that it's available in the browser. At this point, we just open up the lyric track. I can actually click, hold and drag this directly into my lyric track. And as you can see, it actually is showing the the actual notes line by line. Now, personas have included a really useful macro that allows you to auto map this on the fly. And the way that you need to do this is you need to make sure that your text edit file is dropped later in time than from when your vocal starts. So let's give ourselves some breathing room. I'm gonna drop this at bar five, even though I need it to start here. Now, they have a macro that runs and it's got a key command that's been assigned, which is option return or alt return on a PC. So option return Mac, alt return on a PC. What you need to do for this macro to work is you first need to select the very first event, because keep in mind, these are events that have text linked to them. And then I'm simply going to place my cursor earlier in time. Now I'm going to let this song play in real time, and I'm going to fire off the option return, because I'm on a Mac, and you'll see these individual events start snapping. So let's go ahead and do this. 16 years first later one. Okay, perfect. So I got that pretty good. And honestly, for argument's sake, I would be able to open up this lyric editor and I'd be able to play this and it's going to, it's going to follow everything. 16 years later in this young lady, speaking to a crowd who needed to see she. Okay, so you can see that that's good there. A couple options here. We're going to get into those in a moment. But the other thing I want to point out is if you didn't get it perfect, that's not a big deal because you can actually click hold these events and you can drag them and they're snapping to basically quarter note boundaries over here. So if I wanted this to be absolutely perfect, I could go in. This one maybe is a little bit early. Let's let's go to here. This one looks good. This one, I'm kind of aligning. I'll choose to align it here. And then this one. Maybe I could put this here. So you can manually edit these and you could do it that way if you wanted to, but I think it's easier to just do one full pass of the song using option return to snap each one of those events. Keep in mind though, you have to select the very first event before you start running that macro. All right, so now that we have this and it's pretty accurate, let's open up the lyric track again and take a look at a couple other options. First of all, we know that we can choose between our instrument parts, any instrument part that we have, any track that we have, or our global. I will be using this in global mode 100% of the time, if I'm being honest. Then we have some additional options as well. 
First thing I want to talk about is alignment. Let's say I wanted this centered just to make it look a certain way. Also our text size. I want to increase this text size maybe to something like this. I can also increase the size of this window. Keep in mind, this window, if I had a secondary display and I wanted it to be just for one person, I could swap this over to a window that's maybe, or a monitor that's in my booth, or I could just mirror my main screen if I wanted to have this up. The other thing I want to point out is that we have the ability to click any one of these lines and our cursor will snap to that particular line. And what I've noticed is that this, it doesn't matter if you have cursor follows edit position on or not, it, it works either way. So why is that important? Well, a lot of the times when we're working as an engineer, I'm working based off of, for example, an intro and a verse and a chorus and maybe an outro. So when I look at things, I'm looking at bars and I'm looking at, okay, from the beginning of the verse. But when an artist says, okay, can we pick up from, but they roll, but they roll their eyes, then I don't have to go, okay, where is that? And then I don't have to navigate through. I can just click this and then I can see, okay, there it is. So when you click these directly, you're just snapping your cursor to that area. Also, we don't have to have the lyrics display open to do that. If I had my arranger track open, and even if, let me create markers from arranger, if I had my marker track open, I could be seeing my markers, I could be seeing my arranger track, but anytime the artist said, I need to go, I need to pick it up from roll their eyes, I go, sure, right over there. And then I know that that's the point that I need to punch in and record at. So that is the lyric track. It's pretty cool. Once you get used to it, I didn't really get it until I imported a text file. And lots of artists have a text file. Most artists I work with have a phone where they put all the lyrics anyways, and they already format this in one line at a time. So it would be a simple matter of saying, hey, can you send that to me in a text message? and then copying that to a text file of some sort, importing it, and then it's just a really great way, especially if you have a scratch track that you've recorded and you're gonna re-record the vocals, maybe you have another artist coming over that's going to be singing backup or harmony. Maybe it's been a while and the artist actually forgot the lyrics because they wrote them on the fly as they were doing that session and you're coming back to recording two weeks later. You can pull that lyric track open. They can see it before I go. I forgot to point this out. In some cases, especially in faster tempos, it might be worth it to have a little bit of an offset. So the lyrics are displaying slightly ahead of where they need to be sung. In those cases, we have the ability to, asset, to assign a slight moment in quarter notes. So for example, if I assign this 0.5 ahead, notice it's highlighted right before. And you could make this even more if you wanted to. 16 years later in this young lady Speaking to a crowd who needed to see she tried So you have a little bit of control in terms of making sure that your lyrics are residing properly on the bar boundaries or quarter note boundaries so that when we select these events that it's putting our cursor at the proper position in our timeline. But in terms of the scrolling, if we wanted the artist to see the highlighted line slightly ahead on faster tempo material, that's something we can do with the head and quarters. Anyways, the lyric track, a brand new addition to Studio One version six. I hope you enjoyed this content and I will catch you in the next video. Cheers.